All right, let me guess. You bought a new knife, it's been months and now it's dull. Or you have an old knife that you've been neglecting and now you feel guilty every time you look at it. Now, don't worry, I've been there too. So I'm gonna show you the six things you need as a beginner to get started in knife sharpening. And also, I'm gonna show you how I personally sharpen my knives and my axes. I'm Johnny Lim, I'm the backpacking biologist, and those are my two dove friends behind me. And I'm sure you've heard the adage, a dull knife is a dangerous knife. Believe me, I know. Almost all my accidents had to do with my knives or my axes being dull. And it could be scary sharpening your knives. I mean, they're expensive and you don't want to mess it up. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a Japanese whetstone. Mine is double-sided, made by King. One side is 1,000 grit, the other side is 6,000 grit. Next, you're gonna need a leather strop. You could use a leather belt if you got one, but then you also have to get stropping compound. Get a permanent marker, some neutral oil, I use canola, and for my hatchet, I use the sharpening puck by Lansky. And that's it, that's all six. Pretty simple. Now, the first thing you need to figure out is what kind of bevel your knife has. So these two knives over here have something called a Scandinavian grind, and they have a really high bevel. And I find the higher the bevel, the easier the knife is to sharpen. These knives over here have a very small bevel. And usually the smaller bevel knives are trickier to sharpen. So I'm gonna sharpen the larger bevel knives first. Now step number two is to soak your Japanese whetstone in water. It's called a whetstone for a reason, even though I think there's a different spelling, but it has to be wet. Whetstones are made out of a certain kind of clay and they have pores in it. So when you soak it in water, all the pores fill up and the water acts as a lubricant between the knife and the whetstone. You should soak your whetstone between 30 minutes to an hour beforehand. And like I said before, I'm gonna sharpen this knife first, which is my Mora Knife Companion. If you're just looking to find a beginner knife, this is gonna be the best knife. I bought it for 15 bucks on Amazon back in 2015 and I still have it, I still use it all the time. The steel is excellent on it and I learned how to sharpen using this knife. Now while the whetstone is soaking, what you're gonna wanna do is take your permanent marker and color in the bevel. So putting permanent marker on your knife is kinda like using training wheels for sharpening. What we're gonna do is when we start sharpening on the whetstone, we're only gonna sharpen the places that have permanent marker. The hardest thing about sharpening is maintaining a certain angle on the whetstone, but the permanent marker shows us what angle we sharpened at and it basically allows us to adjust. All right, so now my whetstone is done soaking. What I forgot at home was my other stone to make it flat. I'll show you a video of how I do it. You're gonna take a pencil, you're gonna do cross hatches all over the whetstone. Then you're gonna take the other stone and then rub it together. It makes sure the whetstone you're gonna use is flat. Anywhere there's still pencil is gonna show like a tiny little divot. And you're gonna wanna scrub that until it's completely gone. So now that you have a flat whetstone, what you're gonna wanna do is start sharpening your knife. You're gonna use the smaller numbered grit first. So in my case, that's gonna be the thousand grit. Anything below a thousand, it's gonna to be too abrasive in my opinion. In our case, unless your knife is super beat up, you're gonna want a thousand and higher. All right, so you wanna make sure it's still wet. You're gonna to wanna to keep this wet the whole time. So make sure you have water in handy. So what you're gonna do now, take your knife, face the blade away from you, and you wanna tilt it until you find the edge, okay? And the first move we're gonna do is we're gonna draw it towards us, like that. And you see how it's a little darker? Those are the pieces of permanent marker. So if we check this, you see how we scraped off a bit of permanent marker? And that'll give us an idea of the angle at which we're sharpening. And that's why I say this is a little easier because since it's a big bevel, we could rest the knife on that bevel. I also like to take the tip of my fingers and place it on the stone as I drag it. What this does is it helps me feel the edge and I've never cut myself doing this. And with semi-light pressure, we want to sharpen the flat side of the blade. The rounded part, that's called the belly. That takes a little bit more work, but the flat side is gonna be a little easier. So, after a few strokes, we look on this side, and you can see there's no more permanent marker on the flat side of the blade, and there's still permanent marker on the belly. And the flat side of the blade is gonna be the easier parts. Ooh, it's already a little sharp too. So this tells us we're at the right angle of cutting. The belly takes a little bit more work because you wanna draw this back in almost an, a rainbow motion, almost like you're arching. 
make sure the wet zone stays wet. You put your finger at the belly, lift up a little bit, and this takes some guesswork at when you first start. You draw back at the angle all the way to the tip. Draw back at the tip, kind of like a rainbow. And what you're gonna see, let's look at the bevel, okay? We haven't touched the tip yet, but we have gotten pieces of the belly. And what this is telling me is I'm a little too steep. You see how there is permanent marker still at the top over here? That means my angle is a little too steep. What I wanna do next is for my next few passes is don't do as steep of an angle, actually flatten out a bit. So I'm gonna flatten out, do the same process. Much better. And all that's left is the tip. So I put my finger at the tip and just drag it along. You're always checking to see if there's any more permanent marker. It's still a little bit more. All right, there you go. That's good enough. Next, we do the other side. You should never be cutting into the whetstone, so we're not gonna be drawing it anymore. We're actually gonna be pushing it. Okay, I'm gonna be pushing it away from my body. It goes flat, I lift up until I feel the edge, I put my finger down where the edge and the whetstone meet, and I push. Now I push. I'm sticking the knife handle off to the side. I'm gonna bring it all the way to the handle, and then we check. Look at that. And that's why I say the larger bevel ones are easier to sharpen. I'm gonna do the belly, see how I'm hitting it with an angle. It's a little arch movement, a little rocking. Okay, a little bit, I need to get a little flatter. Okay, needs more water. Okay, now I could hit this front part right here. Fingers on the edge. You see, I'm going a little too steep. I want to make sure I get the entire bevel. So, flatten it out. And at the tip, pushing away from us. See how dark that is? This is permanent marker and metal shavings. And voila. There you go. See how shiny it is? That's polished. So now what you want to do is flip it to the higher grit, the 10,000 grit. Make sure this is wet also. And you could do the same thing. Now, for me, I have an easier time sharpening these high beveled Scandi grinds, Scandinavian grinds. So I'm not gonna add marker this time, but you're gonna to want to repeat the process. This side's not as noisy, huh? And you can see even more pieces of metal, see that? All the dark parts are metal. So we are doing a good job. Okay, and we're gonna hit the sharp point. And there we go. That's one side done. Now we're gonna draw it. Fingers, right? Flush, touching the edge. Flat part, super easy. So draw it with you. You don't have to go super hard, but you do have to add some pressure. Now I'm gonna hit the belly. And I've memorized now the angle at which I need to sharpen the belly at. And we're doing the arching movement. Next. Drawing for the point. Bada bing, bada boom. That's a sharp knife right there. Okay, but we're gonna get it even sharper by using our leather strop and putting compound on it. This compound is green, and any kind of sharpening is removing microscopic metal pieces. So by doing this, it would make almost, from what I've read, around 30,000 grit. So what this is gonna allow us to do is put a polished finish, also known as a mirrored finish and you do the same exact thing. If the blade is facing you, 
you want to push away. If the blade is facing away from you, you want to draw it in. Okay? And you just simply push. And the more you do this, you'll see the shinier the green gets. And that's because there's more metal sparkling like Edward Cullen. I don't have any particular number of times I go from each side. You know, people tend to count. I'm not, not, I'm not that uh, detail oriented, so I just go by feel and by look. You know, I'm not really planning on being the world's best sharpener, Hanzo Hattori, make Japanese swords. I just want to get my knives sharp. Oof. Oof. All right. And here you go. Look how shiny that is. Look how sharp that is. Even the crow agrees. Actually, that's a raven. Ravens had like a, a more deeper a little cackling noise. Not like what I just did. All right, so we're all done. See how shiny the bevel is? That's what we're looking for. Let's get our piece of paper. Here. So just like that, now it's razor sharp. Uh, we need oil, and oil is necessary depending on what kind of knife you have. This is a high carbon steel knife, which means that it will rust easily if it gets wet. So if you can see up here in the top, see how it's kind of spotty? That's rust. Now as long as it's not on the cutting edge, you're fine. It doesn't bother me. So we're just gonna add oil. Ah! Oh my God, <laughs> almost cut myself. We're just gonna add oil on this sharp part and we should be done with this knife. I have my oil here. I'm gonna put some on my hands and gingerly on the knife. It would be smarter if you probably had like a paper towel or something. Hope you like that bee flying. <laughs> One of the joys of being out in nature, right? And there we go, now we're done. Off to the next knife. Now this knife is a lot thicker than the other Scandinavian knife, so that means the bevel angle has to change. So I'm relearning the new angle for this knife. For the tips of the knives, I do like going back and forth, but I make sure not to do too steep of an angle to where it indents and stabs the stone. So next we have our smaller beveled knives. A lot of folding knives have a small bevel, cooking knives have a small bevel. What's good about smaller bevels is that generally the edge on small bevels are stronger. The only downside to sharpening one of these on a whetstone is that since the bevel's so small, it's really hard to kind of find the right angle. With the Scandinavian grinds, the bevel's so large, it's easy to just rest the knife on the whetstone. You can't really necessarily do that with the smaller bevel. But essentially, you're doing the same exact thing. You have to be careful with this bevel because it's so small. You want to make sure you only get it on the parts that you're going to sharpen. 1,000 side first. Same thing. You put your finger on until you can feel the edge is touching the stone. And then do one quick push. And with that, we see what happened. Now for me, that tells me that I was too steep because there's still a lot of Sharpie there make sure the angle is a little bit flatter. Better. Now, once you get to the belly, it's the same thing. You wanna do like a rocking motion, like so, and keep your finger here so you can always sense the edge. See, tells me I was a little too steep I know some chefs that are so good at sharpening, they don't need Sharpies anymore. But that is not me. I'm not at that level yet. One day, there we go, one side done. Sharp part away, we draw. Okay, let's see what that looks like. 
Oh, that was perfect. Keep it at that angle. Now we're doing the rocking motion. A little too steep. There we go. Some smaller bevels, a little harder. I'm going to reapply some Sharpie. It's important to dry the edge too because Sharpie will not go on if it's wet. Every knife is different, but you start learning more about your knives and you start getting to know your knives. For me, that's what respect is. You gotta respect your knife, you gotta take care of it. Can you see the difference how shiny this side is versus this? This is probably the easiest part when it comes to the sharpening process because this is a very low risk movement. You're not gonna destroy the blade if you're too steep or if you're too shallow, but you do wanna be mindful. Same deal, you see how when you get the belly, you gotta rock it. So this knife, is stainless steel, so I don't have to put oil on this. Uh, stainless steel does exactly what it says. It doesn't stain, so it won't rust. And that's it for our knives. We use the Japanese whetstone, we use the technique with the Sharpie, and we strop them. And they're super sharp, they're gonna stay that way for a while. But now we have to sharpen the ax. Well, it's really a hatchet. The thing about axes and hatchets is, unless it's a carpenter ax, they don't have to be razor sharp. These don't have to be popping hair on my arm. The fact of the matter is you're gonna be throwing this at pieces of wood. Sometimes it's gonna miss, sometimes it's gonna hit the ground, it's gonna chip. So what we wanna do is just get it decently sharp, sharp enough to the touch. And that's where our puck comes along. To me, a puck is a lot easier to use than the Japanese water stone. The main difference is what kind of lubricant you use. Now, you can use water with a puck, I prefer to use oil. So use the same oil, some kind of neutral oil like canola oil, don't use olive oil. And we're essentially gonna be rubbing this against the side of the ax. Kind of like what you'd see in, I don't know, like Game of Thrones. So for the hatchet, what I like to do is I take the butt part of the handle and I put it against my chest. On my right hand, I'll take the puck that's been soaking in oil and I'll just rub on the edge like so. This one doesn't require your finger to be touching. You don't have to be as precise with this one. You're just looking at the edge. Making sure it's not too steep. And you're gonna be doing circles. So this is actually the first hatchet I ever bought. And when I first bought it, I thought it was sharp. But it turns out it wasn't sharp. And I cut my foot. You can actually see right here, I have a little hatchet tattoo and there's a scar and I cut my foot and I severed an artery and I was camping by myself in Big Sur. I was in the woods. I had to find help. I ended up finding a group of 20 year olds. Two of them were EMTs and they ended up saving my life. I lost so much blood. The ambulance brought me to the hospital and I couldn't walk for three months all because my hatchet was not sharp. Could have been avoided had I known how to sharpen. Do a finger test, that's pretty sharp. Now I'm gonna use the higher grit. And that, my friends, is good. Now that is sharp. And that's it. So you can see it's not that scary if you're a beginner. You just have to follow some slight rules and it's really just trial and error. I messed up so many edges when I first started sharpening knives and now I just don't even really worry about it. I'm by no means a master, but I get the job done. Now, I hope this helped. If you have any questions, any concerns, leave a comment, I'll reply to everything. If you like the video, like the video, comment and subscribe if you haven't, it really helps the channel. And if you're interested in buying any of these products, um, I'll have affiliate links down in the description. I'm not sponsored by any of these products, but if you do use those links to buy, I get a portion of it and it helps the channel out. So I'm the Backpacking Biologist. Thanks for staying, love you guys, and I'll catch you next time.